but you don't want to be like you know Rambo, you know, just guy with a machine gun, ga -ga 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 -ga, just firing away. Instead, with your fills, you want to be a sniper. Hi, I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and in this bass lesson, you're going to learn three of the best places to place your fills as a bass player. <laughs> Welcome to Become a Bassist, where it's all about no BS bass lessons to help you play better bass, have tons of fun, and become the best bassist that you can be. Today, it's all about fills. Now, not necessarily what to play when you're playing fills. That's what people usually talk about when they're uh, you know, talking about fills and all that kind of stuff. But people really talk about where to put your fills. And that's probably just as important as making sure you're playing the right things. You know, If you're playing the correct notes, but in the wrong place, you can have a bad time. One trap that a lot of people fall into, and I definitely know I fell into this trap when I was younger, was to just play fills everywhere, just about every four bars, regardless of what was going on in the music. And you know, it's understandable. You learn some cool new stuff and you wanna play it, you wanna use it, so you end up putting fills just absolutely everywhere, left, right, and center. But you don't wanna be, you know, Rambo, you know, just guy with a machine gun, ga -ga 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 -ga, just firing away. Instead, with your fills, you want to be a sniper. You want to strategically pick the places where you're going to fill and then execute. So let's talk about some of the best places to actually do this. First place that's really obvious to play a fill is when there is a gap specifically for the bass to play one. If you think about songs like the Beatles' I Want You, there's this kind of big build up on an E chord and then throughout the section there's these breaks where it's nothing but space for the bass to play. Yeah, we get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There's that space there. One, two, three, four, space, two, three, four. And it's in these spaces that Paul McCartney, he plays something like this. One, two, three, four, one. Yeah? Super iconic, super famous. It's almost like part of the bass line rather than a fill, but it is totally just like that. Now this is perfect because the song was written with these breaks in mind, right? The same thing happens at the end of the first chorus of Easy by the Commodores. We're getting to the end of the chorus. Easy like Sunday morning, yeah. And then we get this to three. Yeah. Easy like Sunday morning, three, four, one. Ah, oh, pardon me. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah, there's that space in there. And the bass fills it with that. Now, I'm not sure if that space was left deliberately for the bass, but the bass is, you know, what ended up filling that space. And it works so well. Mm -hmm. Anytime there's space for a fill, it is possible to throw one in, but you know, sometimes space without a fill is what's needed for the song. Remember, you're not Rambo, you're a sniper. You want to place your fills strategically and hopefully make the song better instead of uh, making it worse. I know I was when I was a Rambo, I totally made things worse. Let's actually give this a try. I've got a little drum track here uh, with a little space at the end of every phrase that we can put a little fill. Now the track by itself sounds like this. Two, three, four, two, and space. Yeah, so let's just try it out. Let's um let's pretend we have like a chord progression that goes um Yeah, so we get G F E flat and then over break we'll put our fill right there. Yeah? Makes sense, right? We've got it's like a two-bar phrase and then we'll put a fill at the end. So <laughs> yeah, see how that works? There's that space there, and I'm sure you kind of get the picture. Now the real trick is in making sure that nobody else plays uh, there if there is a space specifically for the bass. You get you know, greedy guitarists or oversellers drummers, they kind of come in and step all over your toes. You want to, want to avoid that if you can uh, and like really make that like a bass feature. All right, place number two to put fills is as a way of increasing intensity and the tension in a song. 
One of my favorite fills of all time comes from Oh What A Night, uh, December 63, and that fill does exactly this. It raises the intensity. It's at the end of a section of a song, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on, drums are filling at the same time, vocals are still singing, but man, it's so cool. Um, <laughs> Oh man, I can't sing and play that at the same time. But the fill sounds like this. Yeah, just like that. Um, but this does the job of making things busier, it creates tension, and then when, when we go back to the verse, down there, that tension is released, everything feels good. This is the perfect place to put a fill. Usually these kinds of fills happen at the ends of sections. Uh, for example, at the end of a verse and then going into a chorus or a chorus going back into a verse. Basically anytime there's a big shift in the section. The really tricky part about doing these kind of fills is that there will likely be other people that feel the urge to fill as well. Uh, and it can work if multiple people play a fill at the same time, but more often than not it'll end up being a bit of a train wreck. So make sure that if you do this kind of fill that you're not uh, make, oh sorry, make sure that if you do do this kind of fill that you end on beat one of the next section and be super strong about it. If you look back at the Oh What A Night example, it does exactly this. We end up up here, but when we get to the next section, the one lands hard on that D flat at that start of the next section. Perfect. The third really prime spot for bass fills is in unexpected kinds of places. So typically drummers will fill into new sections and you know mark new sections with big fills. Uh, and like I said, that can be a train wreck if you're playing a fill at the same time. The solution? Fill uh, in between these big markers. So for example, if the song you're playing has a four bar phrase as a verse, try putting a fill in the middle of the phrase rather than at the end of it to avoid stepping on anyone's toes. So if we had something like this, where the drummer's playing a fill every four bars, so this is bar three, two, three, four, four, two, yeah, so if the drum is playing uh, every four bars of fill, we can play in the middle of that phrase. Yeah, so let's wind it up again. Fill. Fill. It's almost like trading off fills. out of the way of the drum fill, and you can see how this works. You're staying out of each other's way, but still having the chance to actually play your fills and do all your fancy stuff. Now, in this example, I'm definitely being more of a Rambo than a sniper, but that's just to, you know, show you these examples. On a real gig, I would not fill nearly as much. One guy that I have enormous respect for his playing is Nate Mandel, the bass player for the Foo Fighters. Now he gets a fair bit of hate in bass playing circles online, which I don't really understand, uh, because I guess people feel like his playing is too simple or they have the mindset of, you know, I could have done that. But what I love about Nate Mandel's playing is how strategically he fills. Rarely will he play more than a couple of fills per song, but the ones he does play, they're super incredible. They're perfectly placed, they're in the right vibe, they're very understated. I'd love everything about them, I think it's amazing. Now whether that's Nate himself making those decisions, or someone else in the band, or it's maybe a producer in the studio, it's just about perfect for the song every single time. A great example of this is the song Best of You. And there's this big section, massive section at the end of the song that's the kind of emotional peak. So to add to the whole kind of epic feel of the song, he adds in uh, a couple of fills. The kind of regular bass line is just... Eighth notes on the roots of the chords. But in this section he adds something like this. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's exactly what it is, I can't remember. But it's super, super subtle, and I think there's another one in that same section as well. It's a super subtle thing that you might not even notice on the first listen, but it's exactly the right idea when it comes to playing fills. This is uh, the kind of second fill, where it raises the intensity, and it's 
like I said, perfect. Also, like I mentioned before, one of my favorite fills of all time is from December 63. Now, we didn't really have time to go over the whole thing in detail in this video, but I'd love to show you how to play it in this video right here. I go through exactly how to play it note by note, but I also show you how you can adapt and use the fill for so much more than just the one song. So if you're ready to learn what I think is the best bass fill of all time, I'll see you in that video there. Thank you.